what is the best way to back up and restore pretty much any computer out there? I found a free and open source tool called Clonezilla. Very, very prominent. A lot of people have used it. However, I wanted to make a video specifically over backing up and restoring from Clonezilla because even though it's an awesome tool, it's not exactly user-friendly and some of the prompts really can be confusing. So I wanna walk you through the entire process. I'm gonna do it on bare metal, not a VM or any of that, so you can actually see the entire process of backing up and restoring. So with that, let's get over on the desktop and go into Clonezilla backing up and restoring. Check the timestamps if you just want to see a, a backup or a restore. So with that, let's do this. So here is my current Linux system. I did a, a Mac OS uh, modification to this one on Pop OS. So it looks a lot like Mac Big Sur. Uh, and I wanted to make an image for all of my members on the portal. And I thought Clonezilla would be a perfect way. But before I make that video, which is tomorrow, I wanted to back up exactly what I have. And if you're at home and you have your system set up a certain way, having a backup on like a USB drive is just a good idea. And they're very universal. You can take them between hardware. I've never had really any issues restoring from one to the next. So let's get into the full backup. First off, you need to actually go to Clonezilla and download it. If you're unfamiliar, you can just go clonezilla.org. Uh, this is all free and open software, and you can see Clonezilla. We're just going to go to download on the left and then just download the stable release. This is a very, very easy thing to do, and it'll just download the ISO, and you can burn it on Windows using Rufus. If you're not familiar with Rufus, you can go to rufus.ie. This is what the Windows tool looks like. And for Linux, I don't even use tools. I just use command line. Um, so if you're interested in that, obviously, you can just go into your terminal, pop it up, and then just go sudo dd input file equals clonezilla output file equals dev your actual device that you put sdf block size equals 1m and then you can put status progress to burn this entire thing. And if you're unsure what device is your USB drive, you can always see a listing of that by just typing lsblk and you can see all your devices on here. Right now, I don't have a USB drive in because I've already burned this and it's plugged into our other PC. So with that, let's boot into Clonezilla and actually start a backup, and then we'll do a restore after. So what we're gonna do is just simply re restart our computer. And the low res is just because of, I'm using an out of band access, uh, remote access tool so I can use it to jump into BIOS and other uh, fun things without actually having actually be on the PC. So I'll just tap delete to get into the BIOS. If I go over to save and exit, you'll see my USB disk right here and we can boot directly from that. So we can hit enter here. All right, and here is our boot menu. Uh, you can just kind of tack between. I don't actually like the first option. I always select the second one with is K, uh, KMS with large font. I find this one just gives a little bit better aesthetic. Now you saw a little artifacting there. Uh, the other one, the 800 by 600, I noticed on one of my screens on a different computer, it never actually booted in. It just kind of left that artifacting. So that's why I kind of mentioned those other boot options. The second option with the KMS fonts, I, I tend to have the best luck with. So I'm just going to select my language, keep the layout, and then you get this basic prompt, which is fine. We're just going to hit start clonezilla doing uh, a lot of different things with clonezilla here you can do all kinds of really cool stuff most instances i'm always using the first option device to image i have also also used like device to device if i had two hard drives that i was just cloning and they're both plugged into the actual machine and i want one to be identical to the other that would be a good one but as far as the rest of these i really don't use those very much most of the time it's just device to image and this says, hey, what do you want to do? Are you backing up a local device, uh, like a USB external drive? You would use local device. However, you can also do Samba servers. Like, let's say I wanted to use my Synology NAS box back there and back up this entire system directly to it. You can actually back up and restore from that NAS device. Since this is probably not what most people will be doing, 
I'll go ahead and do local device, but just know for this system, I would prefer to do just a Samba share. For this video, we're doing local device, which I have a little USB drive here, we'll go ahead and use. So when you click this, this is kind of, uh, again, reading is important. Make sure you plug in the device you're gonna use directly into there. All right, it's plugged in. Make sure you wait five seconds and then press the enter key. All right, shows all our different devices there. Uh, I actually had another USB device just like the one I was using. Um, so it should be the SMI USB disc that we see. So we'll go ahead, hit control C. I will say this is very intuitive. Because I think control C to cancel, not to continue. So this is where we select the destination. I really wish they'd redo a lot of the, the language in here. Again, it can be confusing. But this is the device that we're going to put our image on. So I'm going to go ahead and say this device, which I just plugged in. And then we get to select what we want to do. Directory for the image repository. Boot, EFI. I have something else on here, which is fine. And you can see the currently selected directory name right here here you can kind of see that on this line you can see it's at the root of the device which is fine but let's say we wanted to do boot let's go ahead and just arrow down and say boot you notice how the current selected directory name changed to boot so we don't really want that i want to go ahead and just put it in the root of the drive and tab over to done or use your mouse if you want so now it says the file disk space usage, size 32 gig, use four gigs, available 28 gigs. Uh, that's fine, we'll hit enter to continue. And I like to leave it on beginner mode. And even then, again, you have to really reread a lot of these options as they can get confusing. So for this, you're really always gonna want save disk as you wanna grab the boot partition, the actual OS, everything. This works for Windows and Linux the exact same way. We'll use save disk. Now we Go ahead and label this disk we'll, we'll call this one mac os linux and they'll say okay what do you want to use as a source we only have one option because there's only one disk in this actual computer we'll set okay we'll also go ahead and skip checking and repairing source file systems and we'll go ahead and say no skip the check for the save image. You can go ahead and check it if it's something you really need to make sure that it gets at all. Uh, go ahead and do that. However, for just uh, brevity in this video, I want to go ahead and skip the checking of the saved image. And I'm not going to encrypt this image. If you have sensitive data on it, obviously encrypt it. It's just a good thing to do. And then I like to choose that I'll say, hey, do you want to reboot or power down after it's done with the image? So we'll hit enter. We'll hit enter again. And now it'll just go through and do our backup. Let's see what else we get. Usually you always have a confirmation. Hey, it's gonna erase anything, you know, that type of thing. Watch these and read them very carefully because if you choose the wrong drive, you could overwrite uh, whatever's in that device, which isn't good. So we'll hit yes to continue. And now we let it do its thing. Now this, you can see the device size is roughly 27 gigs. That's the main partition on here. If you have a huge drive, just note, when you restore, you'll need to have that exact same size drive or bigger. What I like to do on big drives is shrink it down. For this, since I'm giving it out to all my members, I wanted to make sure this partition was really small. So I actually shrunk the main data partition of this drive to 30 gigs instead of being a whole 120 gigs. It doesn't really matter for the actual size the image takes up because it will only take up as much data as there. So it's only going to be about 7 gigs big but I just wanted to make sure that when someone goes to restore this, it'll actually restore to their device because if they don't have a 30 gig device, they probably shouldn't be putting a whole operating system on there anyways. So that's why I made it that size. So now we have the check and it has finished saving all of this to uh, this drive itself. If you have problems at the very end of your actual backup session, it should look like this. When I did the first backup, I actually pulled out the drive a little too soon. It didn't actually sync and create a proper image. This right here is what it should look like. Now that it's done that, we can reboot and start all over from the start and restore our image. So here it is again. Now we can start the restore process. We'll simply just start device to image, just like we were making that original backup, local device. We make sure we have our backup device in as well as our other one we do we'll hit continue 
It should show a device listing as it did before. Make sure that our USB disk that with all our images are on there. It is. So we'll go ahead and hit control C. And now we get to select that again. So we'll go ahead and select our USB disk. And here is, you can see a couple images. I actually made this right here and I ejected it too quickly. That was the first time around. That was a failure. You'll notice it says no subdirectory. And this one says CZ image. This is a legit image. Now we don't need to select the images. I just wanted to show you the different stuff on this USB drive. I should have formatted it out. And there should only be one directory, but I wanted to kind of show a more complex scenario to where uh, you can see what it would look like if there's other garbage on the actual drive. You can see that IMG is here. This one, I won't be able to restore because it didn't properly finish that image the first time around. And uh, make sure you do not click this to select the image. If it says current selector directory name is that or that, make sure it's not that. You want it to be to where the thing you're looking at in this screen is CZ image. Something that kind of confused me the first time going through Clonezilla. Just thought I'd mention it. We'll hit done and enter beginner mode. And this is where it should be. If you only see save disk and save parts, that means there's no valid image. If you do see the other things, obviously it sees that image and we can restore it. So now let's go ahead and restore image to local disk. This will overwrite this entire local disk, but we're going to go ahead and do it just so you can see. We'll, we'll restore this image file and we'll go ahead and just hit enter here and we'll go ahead and skip the check and we'll choose. We'll hit enter again and we're off to the races. And we'll go ahead and hit yes to continue. You can see all the warnings. Hey, existing data will be erased after the initial check. We'll go ahead and say yes to continue. And it says, are you really sure it will erase everything? Yes. And after this part, there is no going back. Everything on that local disk is now erased and it'll start the restore process. Once it finishes copying, it'll do a sync just to make sure all the data and all the blocks are in place and we should be finished. And there you see it, part clone successfully restored the image to this device. Now, if you had several partitions, it will restore multiple partitions using this. All right, from the screen, we'll just go ahead and reboot and we should see our desktop with the restored image. And here we are, we have our desktop. So with our image all restored, uh, there was one last section to do is expanding that disk. I highly recommend Gparted for that. You can't do it unless you actually boot into a live environment. You can go to gparted.org. However, if you want to do all this and you're doing this a lot, I highly recommend a utility called Parted Magic. For you Windows users out there, I probably would just get that. It's about 10 bucks and that has Clonezilla and Gparted on it to where you can just do this all in one fell swoop without having to boot into different CDs. But if you don't have any money or you just want to use the free and open source tools without anything, uh, you can just download each tool individually, clonezilla.org and gparted.org for the live CDs respectively that I used in this video. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I love restoring and backing up PCs using Clonezilla. It's amazing. And the fact it even supports network attached storage like I have back there with my Synology, it just blows me away that this is all free. Uh, obviously, as you can see, it's not the most intuitive, but that's okay. It's still a fantastic tool. And with that, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you in the next one.